You guys are looking awesome. <laughs> wacky Wednesday. It does kind of feel a little wacky. Uh, I don't know about your house. My house kind of woke up like a little like off. Nobody necessarily in a bad mood. Nobody in a great mood. Just kind of like, where's everybody at? It felt kind of weird, kind of wacky, but in that maybe just is a day of possibilities, right? Good morning, Karen and Jim. Oh, it's so good to be with you guys. Oh, Mary Tame to the next level. Wildly wonderful Wednesday. Yeah. I mean, do alliterations ever run out? Like, they're just awesome, aren't they? Good morning, Patrick. What's up, bro? Man, so good to see you guys. Pat, Dan, oh, Cindy. So good to be with everybody this morning. Have a chance to just spend some time together. Just kind of slowing down, being reminded of... Uh, that we're in this together, being reminded that there are people right now all across uh, the city of Lincoln and even in the country in some ways all the way down to Georgia, right, Lauren and Patrick, that are sitting in their living rooms, that are riding in their cars, that yet we all gather underneath the banner of the gospel, that we all ga gather underneath the lordship of Christ, that we just say unequivocally that we are his. And even this morning, Paul talking with those in Acts 17, he says this, he says, the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man. And so we just pause right there. Like he does not live in temples, meaning the God's everywhere, meaning that we have access to him everywhere. That we can pray to him everywhere. That there doesn't have to be a specific place and a specific means and a specific method, but rather that communion, or that communion with God is not about how we do it. It's about that we do it and who we do it with. Then it says, nor is he served by human hands as if though he need anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. I think that one of the most revolutionary things about my understanding, my sanctification, my growth in Christ is realizing that God literally wants nothing from me. He just wants me. That it's a weird relationship in that it's so foreign to every other relationship that I typically have where it's like an exchange of goods, right? I'll do this for you. You'll do that for me. Whether that's I'll come over to your house and I'll listen to your stories and you'll make me food. Whether that's I'll go to work and I'll put in time and effort and energy and you'll give me money. Whether there's an investment and a withdrawal in every single relationship, it seems like, except for our relationship with God. And I think that's discombobulating in some ways. Because I, I have become so prone, it's so ingrained in who I am to contribute to the relationship, to bring something to the table, to feel like I have to earn my spot. And yet with God, I can do nothing to earn my spot. That he has everything. That it's like going to the rich kid's birthday party. Like, what are you going to get them, right? Because God made life, breath, and everything. He's given us everything. But later on in the New Testament, say that we have everything we need pertaining to godliness. And so understanding today that no matter what I do or what I don't do, God could not love me more or less. That he fully loves me, fully knows me, and, uh, and wants ultimately to be with me. That he has gone to no ends to declare who he is from the sun rising today to the changing of the seasons reminding me of how he never changes and yet life changes and moves forward reminding me that while death will come that it's not the end that hope springs eternal reminding me that he has uh, left the throne of heaven to come and be with me to die for me and again is resurrected for me and so today, I want to rest in the all-sufficiency of Christ. I want to rest in knowing that I just get to be with Him. That in the same way each of my little baby kids just sat in my arms contributing nothing. And I love them no more today than I did then. No matter what grades they bring home on the report card. No matter how many chores they do. No matter how much they make me laugh. That ultimately, I could not love them more or less and so 
Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think of the divine being as silver or gold or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. That means that we're, God's not a figment of our imagination, but that we were a glimmer of, in his eye. So we love him. He loves us. And Titus just got up. He just walked out and just reminds me in this very moment of just how excited I am to see him. And he's not dressed. He's still wearing a pull-up. He has not said hi. But I'm overjoyed. Do you know that this morning, no matter how you present yourself, God's overjoyed just to see you, to be with you? God, I thank you so much that your love supersedes my ability to grasp it. And so, God, I just want to know you more. I don't want to do more. I want to dig deeper. I don't want to perform better. I want to bask more slowly in your presence. I want to delight more in knowing you and being with you and accepting your love for me because, God, I believe that when I'm fully accepted and fully known, when I comprehend that, that I'll be more deeply ingrained and in touch with you and who you are and what you're doing and the sound of your voice. So God, I'm eager to meet with you this morning. I'm eager to walk with you this morning. I'm eager to hear from you this morning. And I pray the same for my brothers and sisters. And it's in your son's name that I pray. Amen. Pray for you guys. Love you guys. Have a great day.